Hello student, this is Arjun sir and I hope you are enjoying your holidays at home. Since we are not able to come back to the college due to coronavirus pandemic, lots of time is getting delayed. We have a huge syllabus to complete this year. So without delaying much, let's start our online studies in physics also as other subjects have already started. Let's quickly go through with the content what we are going to study throughout the year. So this is the index of your textbook. In this index you can see there are total 16 chapter. First chapter is rotational dynamics, second is mechanical properties of fluid, third is KTGR, fourth is thermodynamics, fifth is oscillation, superposition of wave, wave optics, electrostatic current, electricity, magnetic field due to electric current, magnetic material, electromagnetic induction, AC circuit, dual nature of radiation and matter ac circuit and dual nature of radiation and matter this are the, these are the two new topics has been added in your syllabus structure of an atom and nuclei this was the last year and semiconductor devices are new thing which is added as a chapter over here so we have 16 chapter if you compare this syllabus with the old syllabus old syllabus has 20 chapter but this does not mean they have reduced the syllabus the content is same even they have added more stuff in it so while studying online physics okay through the medium of this online platform sometime it will happen explaining more complicated derivation and numericals will be not possible here so what we have decided we will teach you the theoretical part of it we will clear your concept with the help of this online platform and once the lockdown will get over and college will resume back so we will start doing those derivations and numerical related to these topics so when we will start here we will start with more of theory more of concepts and in between if we feel that ki there is some derivation which are very small to understand some numericals which you can solve will be explaining on this platform rotational dynamic this is our first topic Dynamic means motion. So basically this chapter can also be called as rotational motion. Let's have a look on this example. What you can see on the screen? You can see a rotating wheel. What you can see? Rotating wheel. Now this wheel can give us an idea of two types of motion. One is circular motion and one is rotational motion. How? Look at this fixed axis of rotation. From this fixed axis, let's say we have taken radius r. At this radius r, all the particles which are moving on this wheel are performing a circular motion. So what is circular motion? If an object moves in a circular path or a circumference of a circle, then the motion of the object is known as circular motion. At the same time, when wheel is rotating, obviously this is the fixed axis around which it is revolving or rotating. So here all the particles at this point are performing a rotational motion because they're just rotating on their own axis. They're just rotating on their own axis. So the particle at this point performs rotational motion and the particles which are at a some distance from the axis of rotation, they are performing a circular motion. Can you recall? In your textbook, you'll find this tag on multiple places. This means we have to refer the previous knowledge, what we have acquired till our 11th standard. For example, if I ask you what is circular motion, now you know the answer because in the previous slide we discussed, if any object is moving on a circular path then it is performing a circular motion so basically a motion of an object on a circular path is known as circular motion have a look on this example here every particle on the hand of minute and hour is performing a circular motion another question if i ask you what is the concept of center of mass now this was there in 11th standard center of mass anyone okay so what is center of mass 
center of mass is the point let's have an example also in front of us center of mass is a point can you see in the screen there is a point let's take another example center of mass is the point at which distribution of mass is equal in all direction and does not depend on gravitational field so these dots which you can see which are which have been marked as a center of mass if you take any pointed object and try to balance these objects on that particular point which is marked as a center of mass it will get easily balanced you must have played seesaw as you can see there are two people one boy and one girl sitting on the seesaw both are having a different masses but at the fulcrum at the point if you see the plank is balanced so that point is known as center of mass because at this point the distribution of mass is equal in all direction and does not depend on the gravity and that is why it is balanced kinematical equations of motion these are very simple things you already know there are three kinematical equation v is equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus half at square and v square is equal to u square plus 2 as what is v what is u what is a and what is t and what is s over here so expecting that you all know this thing u is initial velocity v is final velocity a is an acceleration t is time and s is displacement then in last year syllabus we also discussed something called real forces and pseudo forces what is real forces a force which arises due to interaction between the two object is known as real forces for example pushing pulling a pressure dragging whatever you do wherever the interaction happens between the two object is known as real forces what is pseudo force pseudo itself means imaginary not real it's a false force you can feel it but you cannot measure it by easy means it is measurable there are different ways but not by easy means pseudo forces arises due to change in the frame of reference now what is frame of reference again can you recall last year i had put one question distinguish between inertial and non inertial frame of references so pseudo forces basically arises in non inertial frame of reference which means an accelerated frame of reference let's take a quick example suppose we are traveling in a train when we see inside the train everybody is at rest but when you see outside the train you find everything is moving backward now nobody is pushing outside things but it seems like they're moving backward so with my frame of reference where train is moving it's an accelerated frame of reference outside things can be seen moving backward without applying any force so this force which is giving us an idea of backward motion is a pseudo force when you stand in a bus you feel forward and backward jerk these forward and backward jerk again example of pseudo forces real forces and pseudo forces as we discussed in previous slide real forces arise due to interaction between object and pseudo forces are there existed because of the change of frame of reference let's discuss two different type of forces centripetal force and centrifugal force centripetal means towards the center centrifugal means away from the center so if object is performing a circular motion which means moving in a circular path look here this is the ball which is performing a circular motion and moving in the circular path so till the person is holding this ball and is rotating it in a circular path till that time this ball is experiencing one force which is experienced towards the center so the force which is acting towards the center is known as centripetal force and the force which is experienced by this ball in the opposite direction away from the center is known as centrifugal force centrifugal force is pseudo force it's not real force let's have a look 
of some of the applications of pseudo forces centrifugation of blood now our blood is consist of rbc wbcs and platelets and plasma they have different density different masses this machinery thing you must have seen in your chemistry lab just to separate precipitate from the given solution so in a similar way it works when you put a sample of blood inside it it rotates and because of the centrifugal force heavier particle gets settled at the bottom lighter a little up and more lighter more up and that's how the separation takes place the same concept is also used in milk industry to separate cream and milk and the same concept is also used in the washing machine where when you put the clothes on a dryer when dryer rotates because of centrifugal forces all the water tries to go away from the center and that's how your clothes get dried up at this slide we are in this level where we can define and differentiate between the circular motion and rotational motion look at this example we have sun around the sun earth is revolving around the earth moon is revolving if you look at the motion of earth earth is performing a circular motion around the sun in a circular path in a similar manner moon is also revolving around the earth and performing a circular motion but at the same time earth is rotating on its own axis also and this rotation takes place one in a day it means within 24 hour earth is able to take one complete rotation and that is why we have day and night so earth is rotating as well as revolving around the sun so earth is performing two type of motion simultaneously one is rotational motion around its own axis and circular motion in a similar way moon is also doing the same thing it is performing a circular motion at the same time it is performing a rotational motion but unlike earth moon's rotational motion is bit slower it takes 27 days to complete one rotation around its own axis whereas earth takes 24 hour so once moon is completing one circular path for this also take around 27 days so the time duration for rotational and circular motion for moon is approximately 27 days and that is why once it complete one circular motion it has completed one rotational motion also around the earth and that is the reason people from earth has never seen the other side of the moon so let us define Now top is performing a rotational motion. If you say this is the axis of rotation and all the particles are revolving around this axis, on this axis of rotation. So let's have a definition. Circular motion and rotational motion. How we will define circular motion? During revolution, it means this is Earth and this is revolving around the Earth. During this revolution, every particle, every particle on the Earth undergo circular motion about some point outside the object so they all are going in a circular motion every particle on the earth this is the from where it is going this is the center let's consider and this is the fixed distance about some point outside the object or about some other object this is object and around this it is performing a circular motion what is rotational motion during rotation is about an axis of rotation this is the axis of rotation and the motion is about an axis of rotation passing through the object change in velocity is called acceleration what is acceleration wherever there is a change in velocity we call it is an accelerated motion you must have seen accelerator in bike and car what does it does when you accelerate your vehicle goes ahead with a different speed if you accelerate velocity changes it moves faster and faster and faster and if you decelerate or decelerate or retardation means you're applying a brakes velocity goes on decreasing again there is change in velocity so change in velocity is causing acceleration but how this velocity change velocity depends on two factors speed and direction if speed changes it will cause change in velocity 
if direction changes it will cause change in velocity if both changes then they will cause change in velocity and when change in velocity will happen obviously the motion will become accelerated motion because change in velocity is called acceleration look at this example you can see a straight road in this straight road direction will remain same but speed can change so when speed will change the motion of the vehicle will be called as an accelerated motion change in direction here path is circular speed can remain same but the direction is changing so motion can be accelerated motion or both changes speed as well as direction when both changes they will cause change in velocity and the motion will be called as an accelerated motion characteristics of circular motion what characteristic stands for see understand characteristic means something which can change according to the condition according to the situation according to the given cases but if it is written suppose like properties of circular motion so properties will always remain same so properties remain same characteristics can change so here circular motion the first characteristics of circular motion is it is an, an accelerated motion so circular motion is an accelerated motion why accelerated motion look at the example now you know it here the particle which is performing a circular motion let us consider it is having a constant speed it is moving with a uniform speed so let's call it uniform circular motion but at the every point even if the velocity is same but direction is changing and in previous slide we discussed change in direction causes change in velocity and change in velocity causes acceleration so circular motion is an accelerated motion circular motion is periodic motion also what is periodic periodic means which repeats after equal interval of time so if it is moving at the same speed obviously it will take same amount of time to complete one round around the circle so when the time period is same it is called periodic motion you have seen periodicity in nature also day and night periodicity seasons of the year periodicity time taken by earth to complete one complete circular path around the sun is also 365 days plus quarter and takes every year in the same amount of time so this is called periodic so periodic means which repeats after equal interval of time so that is why we have here right now two characteristics of circular motion one it is an accelerated motion other it is a periodic motion kinematics of circular motion look at the screen we have given you one table in this table we have taken three kinematics displacement velocity and acceleration and their representation in linear and angular motion displacement is represented by symbol s in linear motion and in circular motion it is represented by symbol theta theta is known as angular displacement velocity in linear it is represented by symbol v and in angular it is represented by symbol omega so this symbol is known as omega linear velocity is change in displacement upon time and angular velocity is change in angular displacement upon time acceleration in linear it is represented by symbol a which is change in velocity upon time and alpha is a symbol which is used to represent angular velo angular acceleration which is change in angular velocity upon time that is d omega by dt now we will find out relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity which is also known as derivation of v is equal to r omega where v is a linear velocity omega is a angular velocity r is the radius look at the diagram on your screen we have object which is performing a circular motion around a fixed axis this is point o this is origin and at a distance r so when object is moving from this point to point a it is completing a displacement on a circular path and the displacement is s but at the same time if you move from here to here if you look at the center at center this radius is tracing an angle theta theta is known as angular displacement here r is a 
radius vector radius vector can also be called as position vector but in that case origin of the x and y axis and center of the circle has to coincide with each other it means if you take origin as a center and draw a circle then the radius will be called as position vector let's come back to the derivation part looking at the diagram from our geometry we can get theta is equal to arc length upon radius so i can say theta is equal to s upon r where s is arc length and theta is the angular displacement and r is the radius so from here i can get s is equal to r theta so i got s is equal to r theta now what i'll be doing i'll be differentiating both the side taking derivative of both the side so when i differentiate both the side i'll be getting ds upon dt i'm differentiating with respect to time and d by dt upon r theta where r is a constant value so constant values are always always coming out ds upon dt if you look at the table which is next to us ds upon dt in place of ds upon dt we can write v which is linear velocity and next step will be getting then v is equal to r d theta by dt where r is a constant value now here if you look at dt by dt d theta by dt which is called change in angular displacement d theta by dt can also be substituted by omega so next step i'll be getting v is equal to r omega y because d theta by dt is omega so this is how we came to the conclusion and end of the derivation that v is equal to r omega where v is a linear velocity omega is angular velocity and this small derivation comes for two mark which is also known as relation between linear velocity and angular velocity right hand rule gives us idea or understanding of the direction of angular velocity if you take your right hand and imagine that you're holding a rotating object where rotational sense is represented by the fingers of your right hand and the outstretched thumb in that case indicate the direction of angular velocity if the rotational sense is anti clockwise then thumb is upward and it will give you the direction of angular velocity in the upward direction if the rotational sense is clockwise then the direction of angular velocity will be in the downward direction so right hand thumb rule basically gives an idea in which direction angular velocity is going to be so if you curl the finger of your right hand and hold the axis of rotation with the fingers pointing in the direction of motion and then outstretched thumb will give you the direction of angular velocity omega expression for angular velocity omega now what is angular velocity what is normal linear velocity linear velocity is what displacement upon time so angular velocity omega that is angular displacement upon time so we can write omega is equal to theta upon t when object performs circular motion then its angular displacement for one complete rotation is 360 degree which means 2 pi so omega can also be written as 2 pi by t but 1 upon t is a frequency so expression for omega comes omega is equal to 2 pi n where n is frequency we all have seen these flying sticks and you know how they fly now imagine the rotational sense of these flying sticks as we rotate they go upward if it is anti clockwise direction if you move them in clockwise direction they go downward so this flying sticks can give you the best example to understand the direction of angular velocity another example to understand the direction of angular velocity uniform and non uniform circular motion let us understand the difference between uniform and non uniform circular motion first we'll consider uniform motion look at certain points are already given on the screen if object is performing a circular motion and if the speed is same around the circumference of a circle or in a circular path so we call we call it the object is moving with a uniform motion uniform means same but in this case when object is moving with a uniform motion velocity remains same or speed remains same in this circular path but every point 
direction is changing. This change in direction is causing change in velocity and change in velocity causes acceleration. So acceleration responsible for uniform circular motion is nothing but it's called radial acceleration. Why it is called radial acceleration? Because this acceleration is always acting towards the center of the circle along the radius. That is why it is called radial acceleration. In comparison with the uniform circular motion, if you see non-uniform circular motion, so what happens in uniform circular motion, object was performing a circular motion but at a constant speed. But in non-uniform circular motion, object is still performing a circular motion. But the speed of this object around the circumference of a circle is not same. So here, one acceleration is already caused because it is performing a circular motion. So there is a centripetal acceleration. But at the same time, since speed is not same on a circular path, so it will have tangential acceleration also along the tangent, along <coughs> with the linear velocity. So here, the net acceleration is basically, which is responsible for the motion of this component is because of radial as well as tangential acceleration. So if you see this circle, in the circular motion, but speed is changing. So since speed is changing, it is having tangential acceleration along with the velocity in the same direction. At the same time, it is having centripetal acceleration, but this centripetal acceleration is not pointing toward the center. It is somewhere in between. So this is in between, this is total net acceleration, which is getting resolved in two components, radial acceleration and tangential acceleration. Let us try to understand uniform and non-uniform circular motion. In the first case, fan is at rest. Angular velocity is zero, linear velocity is zero, everything is zero, so it is at rest, no motion at all. In second case, you just switch on the fan. If you look at the fan, you'll find the velocity slowly, slowly, slowly goes on increasing. So when velocity is changing, is it increasing? either increasing or when you put up the fan and when it is decreasing. In both the cases, it is showing an example of non-uniform circular motion. But when fan attains a constant speed, it gives an example of uniform circular motion. In the same slide, we can understand here something you'll find theta 1 and theta 2. These are the angular displacement in different time. It covers different angular displacement. So theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 and then once the whole complete circle takes place, the total angular displacement is 360 degree, which is 2 pi. Angular acceleration. How angular acceleration comes into this picture? So for that, we need to understand if object is performing a non-uniform circular motion along a circumference of a circle. Non-uniform circular motion means velocity is not constant. If velocity is not constant, so it will have an acceleration. Now, since velocity is not constant, so it will also change the angular velocity because that is also not going to be constant. So when angular velocity changes, that causes angular acceleration. So expression for angular acceleration is given here. Alpha is equal to change in angular velocity upon time. Now the direction of this angular acceleration will be if velocity goes on increasing then the acceleration, angular acceleration and angular velocity will be in the same direction. If velocity goes on decreasing, velocity goes on decreasing, then the direction of angular acceleration and angular velocity will be in opposite direction. Expression for angular velocity is omega and expression for angular acceleration is alpha. Alpha is change in velocity upon time. Okay, student, we will pause today at this level. We will meet again with the next set of slides and we'll continue the chapter. Derivations and numericals we will do once the college will reopen. Here we will try to understand and we'll try to explain you mostly the theory part. After this slide, I'll be uploading some online videos. You go through it. It will help you to understand our chapter. You will have got the textbook, not physical form, but in electronic form. Please read the chapter. After reading, your understanding will again enhance. If you don't understand certain concepts, 
we have a college group you can discuss in that you got my number in that you can message me your doubt and difficulties we can go through it till then see you take care stay at home be safe